Hey everybody, I am Boxcar the Fox, and welcome back to Dawn Chorus. So I can't remember where we left off, so I'm just gonna go right back into it and hope I remember. Common room. Looks like there's no one in here. After meeting with Rune, I went to the locker room to see if anyone was in the swimming pool or the sauna, but it's completely empty. Where is everyone? For a moment, I think about going to the sauna alone, just to relax, but frankly, I'm already plenty tight, pl plenty relaxed. Just bored. Rune told me that he would be in the common space, so that's where I direct my steps next. There's a faint melody coming from somewhere. I stop for a minute and listen. It sounds like a piano, only muffled. Oh yeah, now I remember, there was a piano in the common space. I continue walking towards that room. The closer I am to it, the louder the music gets. Walking in the common space, I see it's Miko sitting behind the piano. He notices me entering the room and stops playing, turning towards me. Boxcar! Did you know they had a piano in here? Yeah, I've been here a few times already. I didn't pay much attention to it, not knowing how to play piano myself. It's even in tune! Also, he's a piano player. I was afraid that I was it was only here for decoration, but someone is taking care of it. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment I can't help but feel envious of it. Mm-hmm. That's good. I remember you always liked playing piano. That's right. I haven't seen one in a long time. Remember the one we had at our school? Oh yeah. This one looks better for sure. There wasn't anything wrong with that one. It was just... old. Still, it was so much fun. I sit down on the sofa, feeling somewhat awkward standing in the middle of the room. I was always pretty bad at playing piano, so I don't really share the sentiment. Oh, but I remember staying with you after class and listening to you play. Brings back some memories, doesn't it? It does indeed. Why did you stop playing? Ah, Rune and Bjorn suddenly emerge from the corridor, walking alongside each other. By the way, the reason I enunciate those is I have absolutely no idea how to pronunciate them. I'm not European, so I just kind of stab a guess and hope I'm right. Bjorn holds some book in his paw, but from here I can't read the title. Miko and Boxcar. Hey there, long time no see. Hi, Rune. Hey, Bjorn. I had no idea you could play piano too, Miko. Oh, so he's. Fair Boy's also piano. Knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. I actually started with the piano and switched to the electronic instruments later. We heard someone playing the piano in here and I came to listen. Er, and came to listen. I hope you don't mind an audience. I don't, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played a real acoustic thing in a long time. Rune walks into the room and sits down on an armchair. Jorn, however, walks up to me and points at the spot next to me on the sofa. You don't mind if I sit here too, do you? No, no, don't worry. He sits down heavily next to me and leans forward with elbows on his knees, resting his chin on his folded paws. I can hear the wooden construction of the sofa creak under our combined weight. Um, so would you like me to play something? Sure. Hmm, maybe this one. Miko turns towards the piano and lifts both his canine paws, wiggling his fingers for a moment before putting them down on the keyboard. Everyone goes silent in an instant, 
leaving only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Ooh, that's a cool art piece. Miko begins playing the piece, soft piano notes reverberating around the room. He strokes the keys gently, but with confidence. The three of us sit in silence, not wanting to distract him, but also enhanced by the music. I don't think he would notice anything anyway, completely engrossed in playing. There's a genuine smile on his muzzle, as he closes his eyes from time to time, his tail swaying from side to side with the rhythm of the piece. It's like he's playing with his whole body, not just his paws. The piece he is playing is delicate and calm, like a meadow brushed by a gentle autumn breeze. It makes me feel like I'm floating above the ground, or being carried away by a gentle stream. It's touching something deep within me that I haven't felt for a long time. His paws move elegantly in wide swipes across the keys. It takes some time, effort, and he's had to slow down some parts. Oh my goodness, excuse me. But from the look on his snout, it's clear that he's having a lot of fun. He looks really happy when he plays. Yeah, I remember that from the times we were in middle school together. The only times when he looked genuinely happy was when he was playing an instrument. Right now, in a smile I can see the boy he was back then, getting lost in the music and forgetting about the world around him. Suddenly I hear steps somewhere behind me. Turning around I see Torulf entering the room holding a banana in his paw. He raises his other paw to greet us but doesn't say anything. Instead, he walks up to the free armchair and sits down quietly, listening to Miko playing. His steps feel deliberate and balanced. I hadn't noticed it before, but he walks in a really elegant way. Meanwhile, Miko finishes playing the piece. That was really nice, Miko. <sighs> Miko turns towards him surprised. Hi, did we meet before? I believe not. Lake mentioned you in a conversation, though. I know you're Boxcar's friend. My name is Torulf, and it's a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure for me as well. Wow, that was something, Miko. Aw, oh, thanks. Even if, you're s even if you're saying that only out of courtesy. I can't help but envy him. I myself struggling with playing it, struggled with playing anything on piano, and there wasn't any fun in it for me. When I was listening to him play, I always felt inadequate. He started a bit earlier than me, and that was enough for dis to discourage me. Miko used to tell me that I just lacked the resolve to push through the first fa phase when playing anything is a huge effort, but for me it seemed like I would never incur never get out of this phase. The truth is, I never applied myself, while Miko kept practicing and practicing. Now he's better than I will ever be. No, that really was great. Where did you learn to play like that? Well, we had music lessons in school, like everyone in Finland. We were playing mostly stringed and wind instruments, but we had the basics of piano. I spent a lot of time playing piano by myself too, though. Oh, does it mean that you can play too, Boxcar? Um, not really. I had music lessons as well, but I was never any good at it. Maybe you remember something from them, though? Maybe a few melodies, that's all. Would you like to play too? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time, and I was never really good to begin with. Ah, oh, come on, I'm sure you're better than you think. We won't make fun of you, don't worry. He has a, wor he has a worry written all over his face. I don't know if it's a good idea, Rune. Ah, hell, let's go ahead and try it. Fuck it. I... I might try. I don't know what I am doing, but it's always so hard for me to refuse when others ask me politely. The excited look on Rune's face for sure played a big role here. I wouldn't want to let him down. Even though I know in the end I inevitably will. 
Miko stands up from the piano and moves onto the closest armchair. I reluctantly walk over and sit down in front of the instrument. Resting my paws on the keyboard, I notice they're shaking. What should I even play? I try to think of any track I was ever learning. Hmm. There is one that was fairly easy to play, and I think I remember it. I play the scale in which I think the track was composed just to make sure that I remember it correctly. I don't know why among all the ones I tried to learn, this one stuck with me. I haven't listened to it in a long while. Okay, I don't really know what I'm waiting for. Not without some hesitation. I play the first note of the track and then the rest of the chord. The weight of the keys feels surprisingly familiar. The chord sounds nice and sweet. I forget how nice it feels to play. It still feels every- I still feel everyone's eyes on my back though. Okay. Focus. I just need to go through the piece and not make any obvious mistakes. Desynchronizing left and right hand is just as hard as I remember. People often don't realize that and think that playing slow piano pieces is easy, but that's not definitely not true. What? I feel like I'm writing an exam I forgot to study for. Okay, that's all I remember. I turn around to face the rest and see them all looking straight at me. See, that wasn't bad. Yeah, sure. Boxcar? Hey, I really mean it. Cheer up, you look like you're gonna cry. Yeah, that was really cool, Boxcar. Really gave me chills. I really love Digcraft. Digcraft. It was a mo oh, it was from Minecraft. Digcraft music. I'm glad you played that one. Jorn? Miko gives him a disappointed look and shakes his head. Okay, that's quite funny. What's wrong? Wow, I feel like a fucking dumbass right now. That's not digcraft music, that's a masterpiece from the 19th century. Oh, wow, well, well. Look at Boxcar, IQ of 1. Oh. Not gonna lie, I was sure that was Norway for, from the digcraft soundtrack. I haven't played the game in quite a while now, though. I always loved the music from it. It evokes so many memories now. I'm glad to see the time I spent teaching you did not go to waste, though, Boxcar. Oh. Right. That's why this piece stuck with me. It was the one Miko himself taught me. Oh. Frankly, I surprised even myself. Although that wasn't the best performance of this piece, to put it lightly. And it's not like I remembered much of it anyway. For someone who didn't play for a long time, that's really impressive, Boxcar. You're, you're really kind. All of you. I stand up from the piano and walk back to the sofa. My legs feel all wobbly under me, but I try to look calm and composed. I can't help but let out a big sigh of relief when I sit back down, leaning forward and hiding my snout in my open paws. Rune gets up and walks up to me, patting me on my back reassuringly. You did well, Boxcar, don't worry. I don't know a thing about piano, but I could teach you some basics of a guitar later, if you'd like. Actually, I wonder how does piano relate to guitar, if knowing how to play one helps with the other. Miko, can you play guitar too? Just what I learned at primary school. It was so long ago that there's no point in even mentioning it. I remember maybe one song. That was an easy one by Neutral Mino Hotel. Oh yeah, of course you meant the... Ast Astral Plane Over the Sea. That one exactly, yeah. Ah, it's a classic. I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's not the kind of music f you look for, it's the music that finds you. Anyway, you won't be able to help me much then. I'm afraid not. Unless you want me to teach you to play piano. Maybe someday. 
I have a bit too much on my paws lately. But thank you for the offer anyways. Would you mind playing some more, Miko? I don't remember the last time I heard someone play piano live. I don't think I've ever attended any piano concert. It feels different than listening to recordings. I can't really say what it is exactly, but it feels so much more alive and magical. I know a few more pieces. And we have time. As we sat together listening to Miko play, day slowly turned to night. Leaning on Bjorn through the window, I observed the last minutes of the evening sun painting the sky red and orange. Soon after, the clouds started to give way to clear, silky smooth sky, slowly fading to black. So many things happened today already. The afternoon is over, but the memories of it will stay with me forever. Oh. Days end so fast here up north during winter. I don't fear I don't feel tired at all. Quite the contrary, I'm full of energy, but it's already dark outside. Above me the stars look like small pebbles scattered across the night sky. Here, far away from the city and its polluting lights, they shine so much brighter. There's even the subtle band of light that forms the Milky Way slightly visible. It's a very cliche thing to think about, but it's mind-blowing to think how big they actually are. So big and so distant. Impressive, isn't it? Oh, who's this? We stayed at the common space for more than an hour first listening to Miko's play, then just talking together. At the end, we were joined by Lake and Jorgen, who treated everyone with the chocolate they brought with them. It was almost time for the stargazing to begin, so we hurried outside onto the terrace. Here we found a few other students already waiting, and several telescopes lined up at the edge of the terrace. The night sky here certainly is something. Next to the entrance, Devin stands together with a professor I'm not familiar with. Yeah, neither am I. He's a burly badger, probably in his late 40s or 50s, looking rather friendly and approachable. Good evening, Professor. Good evening, Lake. And hello there, Jordan. Evening, Professor. I hope you're well. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Devin glances at his watch, then looks at the notebook he holds in his other paw. Looks like everyone is here already. We can start now. Let me introduce you to Professor Arn Fang, who will give you a crash course in astronomy and stargazing tonight. Thank you, Devin. Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet all of you. So, you're here because you've signed up for stargazing as your activity for today. You probably expect to start with the telescopes, which you can see over there, but that's not what we're going to do. I understand that some of you might be more advanced in the topic, but we're going to start with the very basics today. We're lucky that the wind blew the clouds away, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see much and wouldn't have to postpone the activity. Stars are favorable for us today. He chuckles at his own pun before continuing. Devon, can you go and turn the lights off? Sure thing. Stargazing for someone not versed in it might seem uninteresting. It's just looking at the sky, isn't it? Well, in a way it is, but it becomes interesting when you know what you're looking for. The sky is truly a beautiful thing in itself, but knowing what you're looking at transforms the experience. We will start our course with the simplest exercise. Look at the sky and try to locate the Ursa Major constellation. Thank you, Devon. So, now, can you find the Earl's Major by yourself? I look up to the sky, but I have no idea what I'm looking for. I've heard about that constellation, but at first glance, it's hard to recognize anything, even a bit Ursan looking. If you found it, please raise your paw. Glancing around, I see a few paws already in the air. I myself have no idea what to look for, though. Okay, so now, how to find that constellation in the sky? When you look at Ursa Major, it, in its tail you will surely notice a familiar shape. You may know this group of stars as 
Karlsvognen, Charles Wagon, or the Plow? Plow. That's Big Dipper for you, Devon. Ah, sorry. British English sometimes still confuses me. Oh, that makes it much easier. I think everyone at least once in their life found the plow in the sky. Only. Unlike in the city, the sky here is more filled with a multitude of stars. How am I supposed to find anything among so many? Counterintuitively, you may find out that locating specific stars is harder here because of how many stars are visible. Focus on the brightest ones and ignore all the small ones. I think I see it. Looking only for the brightest, brighter stars, I finally locate a familiar shape and raise my paw. Now, why is this important at all? That constellation is the third biggest one in the night sky, and certainly one of the most well known. It is extremely useful in navigation in the northern hemisphere of our planet. Even Homer in Odyssey mentions Ursa Major as the constellation that never disappears from the sky, and instead bathes in the ocean's waves. If we draw a line going through them, the last two stars of the bull point us straight to Polaris. Who can tell me why is that important? Polaris is the North Star. It's roughly above the North Pole and so in the point around which the whole sky rotates. That's right! Thank you, Jordan. What you might not know is that Polaris is actually a three-star system, comprised of a primary star with two smaller companions. But that's a story for a different lesson. If anyone here is interested in night sky photography but doesn't have the money for an expensive equipment, then you could take some nice photos knowing where Polaris is. With long exposure, you can get those beautiful star trails encircling the North Star. I like this guy already. It's a shame I don't have any classes with him. Our physics professor is probably the grumpiest old man I've ever seen. He's really nice, but any joke about Uranus gets you thrown out of his class. Lake knows something about that. Ow! Lake, I always thought you were a polite boy that never gets into trouble. I don't know where you got that idea. I can attest that it's completely untrue. So, it looks like everyone was able to locate the Ursa Major. That's great. For the next exercise, let's spice things up a bit. This time, you will be using telescopes. You will take a closer look at Saturn through them. That is, if you manage to locate it. I will make it easy for you, though, because there are supposed to be fun activities after all. You were instructed to download a sky map app on your phone before the arrival. I hope you all did that. Oh damn, if not, then do that quickly before we get to the next step. Devon, you can go too. Have some fun as well. Oh, if I can, then sure thing. Okay, so we don't quite have enough telescopes for all of you, so for the purpose of this exercise, you may form pairs or triplets or whatever configurations you might fancy. Don't, I don't mind. So for now, please step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort into bigger grooves when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arne said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, I see that all my friends are already either at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards one alongside Bjorn. Maybe I should have thought about him before I just went ahead and picked a telescope myself. Okay, does everyone in every group have their own telescope? Good, so we can start. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate, and I might say fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at planets than stars. We have a bit of a closer relation with them, after all. You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows? Maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden color shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. 
Yeah. Goodness. An object with a golden color shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the ones around it. Easy to say, hard to find. I start up the sky map, hoping that it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally time to make that decision and this might be the best moment for that. So, who am I going to ask? Ooh, decisions, decisions. I think we all know whom I'm going to pick, though. After a moment of hesitation, I leave my telescope and look around, searching for Rune. Finally, I spot him on the other side of the terrace. He's standing alone next to his telescope, looking at his phone, probably trying to use the sky map as well. I walk towards him, careful not to bump into any of the groups. He must have sensed me approaching because he looks up from his phone and turns in my direction. He smiles slightly, greeting me with a raised paw. Hey, Boxcar. Is everything okay? Yeah, well, almost. I didn't really bother familiarize familiarizing myself with the app before the lesson, and I thought it would be easier to use. I don't really know where to start. You're unlucky then, because it's also the first time I've used it. But don't fret, this doesn't look too complicated. Look, if I point it at the sky, it shows exactly that portion of it on the screen. Rune lifts the phone up and looks through it at the night sky. The image on the phone follows his moves, displaying the part of the sky behind it. I guess it must use my location data. Current date and hour to a built-in compass. It's pretty neat. There's a search symbol here. Let's try that. Oh, there's a category for solar system. This looks really simple, actually. Rune slowly turns around, holding his phone in front of himself before he suddenly stops with his phone pointing somewhere behind me. Aha! And here's our Saturn. That was easy. Okay, now your turn. Just open that menu on the right, click on search, choose solar system, and then Saturn. And the app will point you to it with an arrow. Huh, that does sound simple. I guess I should have tried figuring it out myself first. But then I would... When would I ask Green about the room? I take out my phone, unlock it, and launch the sky map again. It takes a while before it loads. My phone isn't exactly a curtain model, though it's not an older one either. There isn't even much menu diving. Looking for solar system planets indeed turns out to be very straightforward. I choose Saturn, and the app displays an arrow pointing me in its direction. I lift my phone and rotate it until Saturn, fi Saturn finally appears on the screen. Looking away from the phone, I can see the same pale dot shining in the night sky. Captivating, isn't it? I had no idea night sky, night skies could look like this. I didn't really look at it much lately, but usually in the city you can't see much other than the moon. It takes me back to my childhood, actually. In autumn, when the days get shorter and shorter, I often would stray out late just to lie on a hill and watch the starring sky. Back in Finland, you were living in a small town, right? Yeah, and there were uh, there was little light pollution there. What about you? Were you where were you living before you went to a university? I grew up in Oslo. I'm a city boy, unfortunately. Unfortunately, count yourself lucky. As you get older, you discover that there's not much to do in a town like this, especially during winters. Lots of youth pick up playing instruments as their hobby just to have something to do. For example, Miko. He was working in a music store in a nearby town to earn money for his gear and then played around with it for entire days. Hmm, maybe you're right. Both growing up in a city and in a small town has its good and bad sides for sure. But I still imagine there must be the sense of freedom when living in a small town surrounded by nature. I bet you spent your childhood playing in forest, running around your friends' houses, or doing whatever you felt like. Ha! <laughs> I wish. If my parents would have been less restrictive than maybe, but they kept me inside the house most of the time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That, that couldn't have been much fun. I know how it is to spend your childhood at home. So, now that we both know where Saturn is, do you know? Do you want to take a closer look at it? We can continue later, now that we have an occasion to see something extraordinary. Right, so how do you do this? I never used a telescope before, but this can't be too hard. Let's see. 
This looks like a regular tripod. I'll loosen the lock knobs and point it roughly in the right direction. The smaller scope must be a finder to help point the telescope exactly where we want. He moves the telescope while looking through the finder, then makes fine adjustments with some knobs before finally looking into the telescope. I got it! Oh wow, this is so cool. The image isn't very sharp, but I can see the planet and its rings. Here, take a look. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting it to look like a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but it's... I see it very, very clearly. Impressive, isn't it? Much more than I imagined. How are you two doing? Do you need any help? No, thank you, Professor. We're doing fine. Glad to hear it. If you have any problems, I'm here to help. Actually, we already found Saturn through the telescope, Professor. Oh, that's great. That's pretty much all I had planned for this lesson, so you're free to play around with the telescope now if you want. Rune glances at his watch, scratching his neck with the other paw. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. There's still some time before supper, so we can stay here for a while. Actually, there's something I wanted to ask you. Oh. Heartbeat. Yes? I gulp loudly. Okay, better get it over with. I don't yet have a room to sleep in tonight. Would you be okay with sharing a room with me? Hmm, you haven't found anything yet? Rune stares somewhat in the distance, furring his brows. He stays like that for a few seconds before looking back at me. You know that I only have one bed in my room. I know, but I really don't mind. I've had my fair share of sleepovers in my life. I enjoyed spending time with you today, so I thought I'd ask you. Or are you trying to get in my bed? Quite literally. Rune chuckles and I can feel my cheeks getting hot. Rune seems to possess a concerning ability to have me speechless. Now, now, I'm just joking again, Boxcar. Or are you? You know what? Why not? This is actually pretty exciting. Maybe you had your share of sleepovers, but I rarely had guests. So sure. Whew. That was more stressful than I thought it would be. But now all the tension I felt dissipates as I exhale with relief. My breath turns into a white cloud beneath us in the cold air. I didn't think that would actually work. Thank you, Rune. No problem. Want to look for more planets while we still have some time, then? Okay, it looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even gained a new passion. Supper is already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to grab it and eat anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. Rune, I need you to stay here a little longer. I'll catch you later in the cafeteria. Sure, I'll be there with Boxcar. Looks like we're done here. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? We walked back towards the guest house, joining the small crowd of students heading to the cafeteria. I wasn't really interested in stargazing before, but it was nice to experience. Too bad we don't have a nice night sky back home. Home. Gradually, I started to consider the campus I live at to be my home, rather than the house I grew up in. I think with that, with a telescope, you should still be able to see a lot. That sky map is a really useful thing. Without it, it wouldn't even know what I was looking at. <coughs> We're among the first ones to enter the cafeteria. On one of the tables, individual paper plates with food are stacked on top of each other. Looks like each one of us got a sandwich and a piece of some pie. Ooh, that's good. Small bottles of still water are standing in rows next to the plates. Want to eat here? Yeah, why not? We each... We each grab a plate and a bottle of water and sit at one of the empty tables in the corner of the room opposite of each other. There is no lamp above that table, which I'm happy with, as my eyes got used to low light when we were stargazing. I still find it weird that you eat breakfast food at night. Wait! What do you eat at night, then? Nothing, really. 
I mean, we eat dinner and then maybe a light snack later if we're hungry. Huh. I had no idea. Who wouldn't want to finish their day with some nice sandwiches and a bowl of cereal? Cereal before bed? That's crazy. Yeah, I actually agree. There are some madmen who do it, though. Thankfully, we got something more substantial here today. I actually am one of those madmen. I have cereal for supper every now and then. I brought some meal replacement drinks with me in case the food would be subpar, but it looks like the university found a really great guest house this year. Oh, not you too. What's up with everyone buying these lately? It's just convenient. I don't use them at home, I just keep a pack in the cupboards for trips. Who else would use them though? Miko, but he has them almost every day. Ah, him. Frankly, I never would have guessed. I'd be wary of having them often. It's not really whole food. What about phytonutrients and anti antioxidants? Anyway, I hope we get to come here next year too. I quite like it here. I look down at the plate in front of me, taking a closer look at the food. Two rye bread sandwiches topped with slices of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but looks good. Especially considering I'm already pretty hungry. The slice of apple pie is deliciously browned at the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Oh, that sounds real good right now. Then I notice the shadow of Rune's antlers between me and him on the table. I look up at him. He's leaning against the table looking at me with his green eyes. I still can't believe he actually agreed to let me sleep in his room tonight. I asked just because later I would regret not asking, but I was sure he would decline. Rune, when you think of home, do you see the place you live in or the house you grew up in? Hmm, that's a serious question. Why do you ask? I don't know. I just noticed that I'm starting to think of the campus as my home, and it was a bit of a surprise for me. I never really thought about it, but now that you mention it, I think that my home is where I have my belongings. My laptop, my guitar, my pans, my knives, everything I use. So if I arrive here with most of those, it took a part of my home with me. I don't get attached to places that much, I don't feel anything when I visit my old neighborhood. No nostalgia, no regret, no longings, nothing like that. No nostalgia, no regret. Maybe it's just too early for that. Why does it blink when it just adds stuff? How long ago did you move away from home? Four years. That's enough time it makes, makes me feel distant from that place. When I visit my parents, I feel more like a guest than a person living there. How about you, though? You only left this year, right? Yeah, but I haven't visited my parents since then. We write messages to each other from time to time, but surprisingly, I don't miss them yet. Moon nods, his paws entwined with, in front of him on the table, listening to me with a slight smile on his lips. <laughs> By the way, we're waiting for Devin, yeah? Oh, you can start eating if you want, he won't mind. I just focused on the conversation. Whew, I'm finally done. Ah, speak of the devil. What are you doing? I had to move all the telescopes back from the guest house. We couldn't just leave them on the terrace, could we? You should have told me I would have stayed behind to help you. You think moving a few telescopes is too much for me? Er, of course not, but I'd have helped you if I would have finished quicker. It's fine, it didn't take me long anyways. Devin sits down next to Rune, putting his paper plate in front of him. He and Rune start eating, so I grab a sandwich too and take a bite. What is this taste? This definitely is cheese. Oh yeah, I was waiting for your reaction. So you never tried Brunost before? Ah, so that's what it is? I've seen it in stores but never bought any. It's sweet but savory and salty too. Kinda nutty but has an aftertaste similar to caramel. That, that's gotta be an innuendo. It has to be has to be implying something. I don't think I'm a fan, but maybe that's because I expected the taste of cheese and that's something very different. Yeah, it's made by boiling whey until it caramelizes. That's where the sweetness comes from. Technically, it isn't even cheese. It takes, it takes some time to get used to it, for sure. 
I'd rather have regular cheese, to be honest. But thankfully, there's an apple pie, too. Nice, I was craving something sweet since Rune ate all the blueberries at dinner. Uh. So how did you like the lesson? I enjoyed it a lot. It was both informative and fun. Yeah, Professor Arnes seemed like a good teacher. He's a cool guy. Although once he starts talking, he often gets so carried away it's impossible to end the conversation. I also thought he was cool. It was really nice of him to let you take part too. I used to go stargazing a lot, but never with a telescope. It was really interesting, much different than just seeing photos of the sky. I finished the sandwiches quickly during the conversation and finally take a bite of the apple pie. The sweet and tart flavor of ripe apples fills my mouth. Oh, this is so much better. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily and the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavor. Oh, I love apple pie. Mmm, <laughs> they really know how to cook. Yeah, the apple pie is nice. Oh, Boxer, I almost forgot. You found a room for today? Yes, Rune, ag Rune agreed to let me stay in his room. Devin looks at Rune surprised. Rune? Really? Wait, don't you only have one bed for your room? I do, but it's not a huge deal. Hmm. If you say so. So anyways, I'm done eating, and I'll better get going. It's already pretty late, and we all need to get up early tomorrow. Good night, both of you. Night, Devin. Good night, Devin. Are you done, Boxcar? Mm-hmm, all finished. We should get going, too, then. The cafeteria is mostly empty by now. We took so much time talking that everyone save for two small groups of students I don't know left already. We throw our paper plates down and leave the cafeteria together, walking alongside each other this time. The lights in the guest house are dimmed, giving the corridors a sort of quiet, intimate feel. I try to step as lightly as possible not to disturb this calmness. Rune quickly starts a conversation, though, and tells me about living in Onslow, and I turn and talk about how it was living in a small Finnish town. Okay, here we are. Rune opens the door to the room and lets me in first. The room didn't change in any way since my last visit here, and yet it feels somewhat different now. Probably it's because now I know I will be spending the night here. I'm still just a guest, but this time I look around and familiarize myself with the place where I will be sleeping today. You don't have too much stuff with you, do you? You can put the camera bag just anywhere, I don't mind, and just hang your coat next to mine. I put the bag down on the desk next to Rune's books. I thought it would do some more photos today, but I had way too much fun with others for that. The two instant photos I took will have to do as reminders for the day. So much happened today, though I'm afraid... <sighs> Goodness. I'm afraid I will forget most of it with time. Maybe I should start a journal, like Miko. Box, are you there? Sorry, you put down the camera and just froze looking at it. Oh, sorry, I got lost in my thoughts. I kind of forgot about taking photos today. I worry that a few years from now I will barely remember this day. I thought about writing a journal, but if I did, I would regret not starting it earlier. You realize it's a cycle you can never break out of. If you kept thinking like that, you would never pick up anything new. It's never too late to start stuff, whether it's starting a project or learning something new. If I had the same way of thinking, I would never start learning guitar, because being 21, I already, I was already too old to become a great at that. One of my favorite jazz musicians, a pianist from Japan, taught himself how to play piano starting at age 22 and went on record, and went to on record widely known records with really passionate playing from him. This is something a bit different. But still, if you're considering that, I think you should just do it. Don't try to find excuses not to do stuff, because you're only fooling yourself. You're right. The force of habit is strong, though. That's why you should work on habits. That's the best investment in yourself you can make. Hmm. Anyway, sorry. I got a bit carried away here. Rune opens a bedside cabinet drawer and takes, off, takes out two bandanas from it, pointing them at me. You want one? That supper was tasty, but a bit too small for me. Thanks, but I'm full. I definitely don't eat as much as you do. For me, that was a big meal. 
Ha, that's probably true. Maybe you want some tea? Not at this hour. I'll have problems sleeping later. I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine. That's wise. I don't drink caffeine teas in the evening either. However, I happen to have some rub... rub with me and that's completely caffeine free would you like a cup sure sounds good why not I don't think I ever tried it so it'll be interesting it's a great evening drink it's really relaxing while rune prepares the tea I sit on a chair next to the desk and check messages on my phone I always have my notifications on me and check the messages when I have time not when someone writes to me where are you staying tonight found a room yeah I'm with rune yeah, I can understand the shock. Hey, Boxer, you found a room for tonight? Miko's message always have a proper punctuation and capitalization, which is rare to see. When I write with him, I do the same, otherwise I'd feel crude. Yeah, I'm staying with Rune. It takes a moment before Miko replies, but with the way he composes his message, it's no surprise. Okay, I'm glad. Have a good sleep, Boxcar. Meanwhile, the smell of... Re Rue Boy's tea reaches my nose. It's quite unlike regular tea. Heavier and earthy. Okay, done. Here is your cup. Rune puts down both cups full of steaming liquid on the desk and sits down on the bed. Hmm, it will take a while before it cools down. You want to take the shower first, or should I go ahead? I can go first. I'll definitely like to freshen up. I got quite nervous when I was playing the piano and sweated a lot. Sorry about that, Boxcar. But in the end, you did very well. By the way, if you'd like to learn some guitar, how about tomorrow afternoon for a quick lesson? Yeah, we'll see. I don't know how much time we'll have after the trip into town. True. Well, we will see. Okay, I'll go after you. Then, in the meantime, the tea will cool down. Sounds fine. I got a bathroom kit from the receptionist, but do you have a spare towel? I think so. There should be two in the bathroom. Both are clean, so use whichever. Okay, good to know. I fetched the bathroom kit from my camera bag where I kept it all day and go into the bathroom. I first brush my teeth, paying special attention to my long canines. I'm glad they had a kit with a toothbrush designed for Felide. Felide. Those bigger and wider universal ones are some painful to use. Then I undress myself down to the boxers, putting all my clothes on the toilet lid, first making sure that it's clean and looking at myself over the mirror. This feels completely unreal. I still don't believe it's actually happening. I'm going to get into bed with Rune, and sleep next to him, just the two of us alone. Leaning in, I look at my own eyes. I feel so lightheaded. I press my paw against my chest. My heart is racing. Is it even possible that he's gay too? Probably. He was acting sort of flirty today on some occasions, but that must have been him just playing... Just playful joking, right? I doubt it. Right? My boxers fall to the ground. Just from thinking about the situation, not even rude specifically. I got a semi. Great, now I'm thinking about him. The fact that he's just one thin wall away from me is making this both awkward and hot. I should have stayed in here too long. Too long doing nothing though, or Rune will start wondering what the hell I am doing here. I grab the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and hop into the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo and start rubbing it into my fur, starting with my head. For some reason, I start to wonder what's going on in the room, in the other rooms right now. Is Lake chatting with Jorgen or doing something alone? Knowing them, Lake is probably telling Jorgen some story while Jorgen only nods from time to time reading a book. I can imagine the scene vividly. Both of them on their own beds, Jorgen leaning against the wall, Lake lying on his belly, swinging his legs behind him. Is Toruf spending the night alone? I don't even know which room is his or if he has a roommate. What about Bjorn? He seemed kind of lonely today. I hope he's fine. Maybe he stayed with the other others after stargazing and they're having fun together. I wonder if Miko is working on his music or resting already. 
I continue with the relaxing ritual, humming a melody from some Korean song I found on Stripeify until I'm clean. Feeling a bit self-conscious before getting into one bed with Rune, I use almost a whole bottle of shampoo. Then I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing it into my wet fur. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice, too. I finally rinse my whole body again and turn off the water. Stepping out of the shower, I notice that the mirror is all fogged up. Maybe I went a bit overboard with the water temperature. I dry myself with a fresh towel quickly before searching for my phone in my trouser pocket to check the time. Only I don't have my phone here, I must have left it on the desk. Holding the trousers in my paw, I now realize something. Ugh, now I have to put my dirty clothes again. I wish I'd at least had a fresh pair of boxers. If any, if anything happens between us today, I hope Rune won't mind that. Wearing only boxers and a t-shirt for modesty, I open the door and step out of the bathroom. Rune is sitting on a chair and reading a book when I enter the room. I couldn't have been there for long though because I can see the steam still rising from the cup of Rub Ruboy's standing on the desk. Next to it stands a Bluetooth speaker playing some gentle ambient music. The cold air here tickles my skin, making me shiver lightly. Hey, Boxcar. Looking pretty wild with that hairdo. Shush you. I have long fur, unlike you. It takes some time to dry off completely. Yeah, I don't envy you all the brushing. Hmm, listen to this. Rune lifts the book and starts reading from it. Like trees in winter, outside the cabin window I wither. In the world where all is known and nothing will surprise me, I suffocate. The light of the moon flickers as if trying to communicate something, but I already know what I have to do. I fold my wings and light the match. It's time to get up and move on. I'm not sure why, but I like that. Moon flickering? That doesn't really happen, does it? I guess we would have to ask one of our astrophysicist friends. But anyways, my turn now. Rune puts the book down and takes a small sip of Ruboys before standing up and walking over to the bathroom taking the Bluetooth speaker with him. If you want, you can just get into bed already. Oh, by the way, are you tired, Boxcar? Not very. I did a lot today and I didn't sleep that much, but it was the most exciting day I had had in a long time. I couldn't feel better. Great then. Okay, I'll be back in ten minutes. I'm unsure what to do now, so I just sit down at the desk and grab my cup. The liquid inside is dark and clear. The smell reminds me of autumn and falling leaves. I take a whiff and smell itself send shivers down my spine. I take a small tasting sip. It's still quite hot, but good enough to drink. Mmm, it's good. Not much different than regular black tea, but without any bitterness. The music plays in the bathroom is faintly audible in the room, muffled by the walls and flowering water. Listening in, I think I can hear Rune singing with music. The light of the moon flickers as if trying to communicate something. I lean on the desk and look out the window, but the moon shines in the same as it ever was. Drinking the tea, I continue outside, looking outside the window until I finish the whole cup. The air in the room is a bit chilly and my paws are starting to get cold. Holding my phone, I get into bed, covering myself up to my neck. My phone has a low battery already. Well, it's no wonder I'm surprised it lasted until now. I will have to ask Rune about a charger. Hopefully he has a free one, or at least will let me use his for a while. I put the phone down on the bedside cabinet. I don't want to drain the battery further. And I'm back. Oh my. I might have seen him shirtless before, but it was an entirely different context. This time I'm in his room and he's about it to get in bed with me. Oh, were you cold already? I... Uh... Hmm? What, I left you speechless? Rude, you're not helping! You're a funny guy, Boxcar. I hope you don't mind, though. I usually sleep like that and I didn't bring my pajamas with me. If that bothers you, I can put on a t-shirt. No, no, it's okay. I don't mind at all. Quite the contrary. Okay, I'm glad. I wouldn't want to get a good t-shirt all crumpled up. 
Rune puts the speaker back on the table and grabs the cup of Rubio's, taking a big gulp. Mmm. Still warm and tasty. I hope we could do something more today, but it's already pretty late. Sorry, but that won't be the most exciting sleepover of your life, Boxcar. Absolutely incorrect. <laughs> Actually, I hope you won't notice how excited I am right now. It's hard not to stare when he just stands before me like that. I imagine to sneak a peek or two in the showers, but now I dare look at him more openly. Even from here, I can tell that he smells clean and pleasant. He must be using a jasmine scented shampoo because that's what I can mostly smell. Despite having relatively short fur compared to me, he has a nicely fluffy chest, and similarly quite a lot of fluff on his underbelly. I'd love to just press my snout against his chest and inhale his scent. Looking even lower, there's a deliciously si si <laughs> there's a there's a deliciously sizable bulge in his boxers that he does little to conceal. And it does leave and it doesn't leave much to the imagination. Boxcar? Yeah. If you like looking at me so much, maybe you'd like to feel my muscles. Wow, he's going right in for it. I go loudly. Oh, he can't be serious. My cheeks feel hotter than a PC left alone to mine fluff. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um. What? Ah yes, Boxcar the master of eloquence. Gosh, Boxcar, you're so easy to tease. Although, that sure would make for an exciting sleepover. All this fucking smug ass face he makes. Come on now, we should get some rest before tomorrow. Do you want to read a bit or something before we go to sleep? Oh, that reminds me, do you have a spare charger? I have something better. A power bank. This man plans. I guess this deer plans. He's not... Well... I don't know. It might come in handy tomorrow in town. Rune takes the power bank off the bedside cabinet drawer, already with a plugged-in cable, and passes it to me. Here you are. Thanks. So anyway, I'm be... I'm gonna be going to sleep now. You can stay up if you want. I have a rather slight sleep, unfortunately. I might wake up and start walking around the room or go out. If that happens, I hope I won't wake you up, but I'll try to be quiet. I'm a heavy sleeper, so that's no problem. I envy you, then. I haven't had a good... Oh, shit. I haven't had a good night's sleep in forever. I haven't had a good night's... I haven't had a good long sleep in... Well, I don't even know how long. Okay, so... Good night, Boxcar. Rune walks over to the light switch and turns it off, then gets into bed next to me. To my dismay, he keeps probably as far from me as possible. He turns around for a while before finally finding a comfortable position. The only sound I hear now is heavy breathing. I obviously couldn't notice that before, but all his breaths are long and deep. Good night, Rune. It's hard to be sure if an almost completely dark room, but I could swear I saw him smile. I put my head down on the pillows and close my eyes. But it's absolutely impossible to switch off while I'm lying next to Rune. Oh, I like them. I lift my head and look at him again. My eyes got used to darkness, so I can see him faintly in the light of stars that blink outside the window. Looking at him like that, sleeking peacefully, is I feel a longing rising from me. I want to get closer to him. Not only physically. I want to get to know him and understand him. I want him to want to spend time with me. I want to stay up late at night and read books with him or listen to him play guitar. I want to see him smile. And I want him to turn over and snuggle me now so I could fall asleep in his arms. If only I could reach out and touch his sleeping snout. An autosave was created for you. You can find it in saves under the tab A. If you prefer to create a manual save, you can scroll back and do it now. 
um, well, I guess that's where I'm going to cut it for now. Very, very nice place to stop, actually. So, actually, let me make sure. Oh, what the fuck? Hello there, and a happy new year to you. This update was a bit rune-centric, but don't worry. The next one will feature a wider range of characters. Oh, well, I picked the good fucking character then. We hope you enjoyed it regardless. We w oh, this is the end! We want to thank our patrons for support. It's thanks to them that this project can continue. Special thanks goes to our formidable patrons. Nefer I'm going to butcher all of these and I apologize in advance. Neferu, Lilycanrock, Varen, Christian Reginald, Renegale, Dominic O, Marcus the Fox, Zebra R, Vess, Heir of Spiritual, and Future Grave. Huge thanks also goes out to Nova Fox, who helped us immensely with proofreading this month. If you like this game, please consider becoming a patron by supporting us there. You can get new builds of Dawn Course on release, plus other perks, like access to polls and sneak peeks from upcoming updates. Every bit helps. Our patron page can be found here. Don't forget to follow our Twitter page. We have created a new survey for this update. You can vote on your favorite characters there, report any issues you might have found, and leave any feedback you might want to provide with us. We also have an official Discord server for Don Chorus. I'll be damned! Lastly, if you want to help us further, you can leave us a rating on our itch.io page. Five stars. Six stars, even. Every five star rating on itch.io makes Don Chorus show more often to more people. Bet your ass this is getting a five star rating. I love this. This was actually really nice to do. You're of course free to give the game any rating you want, however, due to the fact that visual novels on it routinely get five rated 5 stars, anything less than that lowers the average and makes it harder for us to gain visibility. Thank you again, and until next time. Oh, that's the end. I like that. Well, I guess this is where I'm going to stop it, so thank you everybody for watching. I liked doing this. If you guys want to see more um, more visual stories like this, I'd be more than happy to do them. You know, let me know in the comments below and leave a like and I'll look into it, find some more. And... I mean, I don't really have much else to say. This was awesome. I'm definitely gonna look more into this. I'm hopefully gonna get more updates on this in the future. This was great. And if you guys want to download this, it's on itch.io. Just look it up. You can play it for yourself. I highly recommend it. 10 out of 10, all that good shit. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So thank you everybody watching for watching this. And with all that being said and done, stay foxy and take care.